Hello everyone, my name is Sunny. I'm with CMH3 Studio and today we're going to do something a little bit different. It's not mobile app development, it's actually something that I kind of did as a personal project back in December of 2019. So about six months ago, I had come up with this, I don't know, I was falling asleep one night and I was thinking about, um, you know, I've been watching videos on quantum chip designs and was also thinking about other things. Uh, so I, if you don't know about much about quantum computers, the chip is, is the key and it's how uh, future computers someday will be able to process many more complicated uh, algorithms than today's classical computers. So as I was falling asleep, I came up with this design, this quantum chip design, and uh, I documented it here. I called it the Sunflower Quantum Project, uh, quantum chip design proposal, and I wrote this up um, and added some graphics that I thought could help, you know, convey my uh, idea, my message of designing quantum chips in a particular uh, way where the uh, failures of current uh, quantum chips we're having, which is, so if you don't know much about quantum computers and, and bits, um, a bit is a zero or a one, but to a quantum computer, the bit can be both zero and one. They call that superposition. And in order for uh, quantum computers to to do these massive calculations, they're going to have to not only stay in superposition, but then use other quantum bits in order to exponentially grow their capability of handling uh, these algorithms. So I'll kind of give you an idea of how I came about this idea and some of the, the ideas that, you know, kind of further evolved as I was going with my, um, I don't know what you call it, this endeavor to write up, you know, what was in my brain, what was going on at the time. And then there were, you know, little things that I would find as I was moving and learning more and more about it. I started watching YouTube videos about quantum computing and, and honestly it was it was a lot to take in and understand. I still don't understand it, but I felt like this was right and something I should document and do. So I did it that way. And one of the funniest things I, I came across was some quotes from, you know, uh, people that relate to quantum computers and quantum mechanics. And uh, I'll, I'll read this one here. Uh, it was a quote from uh, Richard Feynman that said, nature isn't classical, damn it. If you want to make a simulation of nature, you better make it, in quantum, make it quantum mechanical. And by golly, it's a wonderful problem because it doesn't look so easy. So what is this all about? Why, why am I even writing this up? This, this is what... I, I was talking about. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the golden ratio or if you've ever heard of something called the Fibonacci number, but what it is like in nature, like on a, like a sunflower, I don't know if you've ever noticed that there's this specific design pattern and it kind of looks like this. It's, it's this pattern right here. And what, what is nature doing here? What it's doing is this is the only um, ratio that will yield the most uh, seeds and results and further growth of that plant or whatever it is. And it's going to me that that visual of seeing the, the golden ratio I applied to to the quantum chip building because uh, that's where how the qubits are going to be laid out in, in my idea. So the golden ratio is 1.68 or negative 0 
and it's represented by the Greek letter Phi, and there's that Greek letter right there. Um, I kind of say, yeah, it's related, it refers to the Fibonacci number, which is a number that is repeated in the natural world. And I say this, I say scientists are building quantum computers have missed this important clue in their design. My proposal is to describe the quantum bit arrangement that mirrors nature's perfect ratio. If you want to simulate nature, then engineer nature's ratio on your quantum chip. So in my idea, I have arranged uh, 150 qubits in this pattern. And again, when I was talking about superposition and that kind of thing, what you have to remember is as, as you use qubits like you would use a bit, you actually can exponentially increase the amount of work that this chip can provide. So if you uh, align 150 qubits onto a chip and you get them in tangled where they're, they're working with each other in that superposition state, you could actually gain a capacity of, of 1.4 I'm going to mess this word up. Quattro decilion. Quattro decilion? That's a big number. Uh, this is the number written out with zeros to give me an ID, idea. Uh, you know, so one of the problems and why I came up with this is they have a problem called decoherence. And what is that? That's, that's that entanglement failing or dropping because it can't stay connected with each other. And I think the reason why they couldn't stay connected is because they were arranged improperly where they couldn't best communicate and seed with each other in a way that they can sustain themselves, stay in that state of zero and one in that state of superposition for longer and for better time. So, in this write-up, I start off with my superconductive quantum bit. Our quantum bits are spaced exactly 1.618, and there's the long number, on a graphene cir uh, circuit board. So here's kind of like a sneak peek of the inside of my quantum bit. This is my quantum bit fully um, layered, I guess if that's the way to say it. And inside the quantum bit, right in the middle of it, is how, uh, this is going to sound strange, this is how the superposition happens. You, you create what is called a Josephine junction between two elements here. And on my chip, I spaced seven Josephine junctions on one qubit with one in the center and then six on the outside and the reason why I did that is I'm trying to increase the um, air fault or air correction that's going to happen and so I, I on a single qubit and there's 150 of these on on the board on the uh, circuit on the chip I can't talk those seven Josephine junctions with one as the primary and six as, six as secondary uh, are utilized to sustain the superposition and they do that through redundancy so if one of these Josephine junctions fail there's six more that it can uh, I don't want to say take its place but they help create a almost like a majority logic where if, if, if you're down and you're up and you're up and you're up then we're going to say we're up and that'll help keep that uh, fault from happening. So when you have these placed on a circuit, on a chip like this, you're going to have to have ways for them to travel. You know, electricity travels. These electrons travel through uh, the circuit board. They have to run on these trace lines. And those trace lines, uh, I've... What I've done is it's kind of like a good old-fashioned networking twisted pair. I don't know if you're familiar with networking, but twisted pair. In those twisted pairs that 
you know circulate through the chip uh, what I've done there is see because these these twisted pairs they have to handle that 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 frequency that transmission that's coming through the line and I call it the quantum bus line but it's the way that quantum chips can then be utilized is they have to be able to to change right they have to change their their frequency to do certain functions like an and function or an or function or a c naught and the way that they do that is changing the frequencies and the pulses of those microwaves coming through the bus lines so i've got connected to all my 150 are these superconductive um, dual transmission line resonators they act as the the control and the readout and the quanta and the quanta bus lines to manipulate the qubit so that's how they turn on and turn off the qubit if that's a way simpler way of saying it uh, turn turn the state is really how I should say that they, they, ch they change the state of the qubit in order to perform the, perform the algorithm or the function so these cables these lines these bus lines are are capable of synchronous and uh, synchro capable of synchronous or distinct microwave pulses or you know like a, the the pulse of it like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the frequency is the megahertz or the pitch and then the duration is the length of the actual uh, transmission these are routed directly into the qubit from a um, super chilled we'll call it super chilled dilution system and they are also married to each one of the other qubits on the chip itself so this is just a, a little diagram a circuit diagram of what I'm talking about um, this is the qubits themselves and so there, there are layers of different kinds of materials the qubits are placed on the graphene board and they're coupled to each other with the dual helix bus lines. Uh, the aluminum Josephine junction, that's the pieces right there, piece of aluminum plus aluminum, and then those little, it's hard to see those, uh, maybe I can blow that up. Uh, those are, those have a small gap in them and the aluminum Josephine junction inductors are, are shunted two large niobium capacitors and then the gold covering I thought looked cool and it also helped with de heat dissipation um, altogether they're effectively making this a non-linear LC oscillator and then to keep these because what you have to do to keep these electrons these atoms from going crazy you have to really cool down that environment to to slow things down and keep things quiet because uh, you have noise you have radiation you can have outside interference temperature all these things can change the state of that qubit and you're trying to prevent that you're trying to keep it from from uh, disturbing it so you'd have to and this is not I'm not like coming up with my own dilution system this is something that has exist already what I'm talking about is actually just the chip design and some of the materials used to make those connections so again when I was talking about when I was working on these things and finding some of those quotes from um, Richard Feynman and other just my research to get to this point you know that when I when I started this it all started with um, the perfect ratio the Fibonacci number and the Greek symbol Phi and it's just a weird thing kind of happened to me beginning of, cause we're talking about superposition is something being a zero or something being a one at the same time I mean just look at this symbol it is literally a zero with a one and that's a symbol I mean it's this is hiding in plain sight to me I mean this answer was always there we just never ever saw it so in this uh, document I wrote up, I gave my notes of where I got this information, and you could follow that there. 
And then, of course, you know, I have some pictures or examples of where and how the Fibonacci uh, or the perfect ratio is in our world all around us. So why couldn't it be on the quantum chip itself? And this is another, uh, this is, yeah, this has got a little bit more uh, indication of where this stuff, that's niobium, that's the aluminum, Josephine junctions right there. Graphene is used on the actual qubit plate. And then they're all just squeezed on there in a specific pattern using those uh, transmission lines. So the last part of this I thought was kind of an interesting quote I found. It's from Eric uh, Pevermagee. Uh, when the invisible walls between two secret gardens crumble down, it may provoke an irreparable emotional earth slide, or it may be an unexpected opportunity of building a new fangled bridge between the clandestine desires and furtive impulses. So I thought that was kind of interesting. still kind of hard to see but there are two pieces there that are separated by a very small amount of space and that's where the uh, Joseph Junction capability works in down from the dilution refrigerator comes down straight down into these lines and then these green lines are representing the qubit to qubit connection. Alright, well that's today's video. I hope you found it interesting or if this was stupid I apologize. I've had this, you know, sitting, you know, on my desktop for six months or more. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing with this? Why did I write this up if I wasn't going to share it with people? So here it is. This is what I did. You can poke holes in it and make fun of it. I don't care. It's just something I felt like I should share. And I really enjoy doing it. I learned a lot. And I hope you did too. If you like what you saw, please uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you're on Library, please go to my library. It'll be in the link there in the description below. A link to all my channels and social media as well. And uh, please let me know what you think. You guys have a great night. Take care.